as a second candidate defects to the Conservatives. Is it unfair to say that the majority of Reform UK are racist, misogynistic and bigoted? They say there is a massive stitch-up going on here. Political commentator Patrick O'Flynn is going head-to-head -head with former senior advisor to the Lib Dems, Pablo O'Hanna. It's Patrick Christie's tonight. We're only on GB News. Is it unfair to say that the majority of Reform UK are racist, misogynistic and bigoted? Are they victim of a massive stitch-up? It's time now for our head-to-head. -head. Yeah, so this morning, a second candidate for Reform UK quit the party and switched their allegiance to the Tories. So Georgie David was due to stand for Nigel Farage's party in West Ham and Beckton. She issued this quite bizarre statement, I think, really, through the Conservatives, saying, I am in no doubt that the party and its senior leadership are not racist. However, as the vast majority of candidates are indeed racist, misogynistic and bigoted, I do not wish to be directly associated with people who hold such views that are so vastly opposing to my own and what I stand for. Well... In response, a Reform UK spokesman said, we're very disappointed with Ms Davies' course of action. We strongly disagree with her sweeping comments about the vast majority of our 600-plus candidates, the vast majority of whom she can never even have met. And we find it sad and strange that she chose not to bring up any of her concerns with the party leadership before publicly trashing so many of her blameless colleagues who are giving their all to get Reform UK elected. So, look, tonight I am asking... Were those comments unfair? And actually, in light of the fact that, again today, Reform UK came out and said, well, hang on a minute, we think that there might be a bit of a stitch-up going on here, i.e. the Tories have planted people in the party to defect at the last minute and cry racism. Are they the victims of a massive stitch-up? I want to know your thoughts. GBnews.com forward slash your say, at GB News. While you're there, go and vote in our poll. And, uh, yes, OK, all right. So, look, going head-to-head -head on this now, we have Patrick O'Flynn, who is a former political editor at The Express, and we've also got Pablo O'Hara, who is a former advisor and spokesperson for the Lib Dems. Patrick, I'll start with you on this now. Um, do you think that reform are being stitched up here by fake candidates that the Tories have planted? I'm not sure I, I, I think there's any evidence for actual... Uh, the sort of conspiracy end of it, the fake candidates from the off, the plant theory. Uh, but I do think absolutely they're being stitched up. And it's a sort of classic uh, big two-party stitch-up where the left want to stitch up the Nigel Farage vehicle for ideological reasons and the Tories want to say this party's not respectable to vote for for reasons of saving their own skin. And I see the Tory party like a sort of salmon that's been washed up on a riverbank that's gasping for air, thrashing around for any way... Uh, of attacking reform. I think it's horribly unfair what this candidate, Georgie David, had said. And reform have made the point there that she's hardly met any of the candidates. She was a paper candidate. She agreed to stand mm. six weeks or mm. so ago for a party that's really offering uh, a policy slate that's perfectly mainstream but just dif different from the establishment parties mm. coming off the net zero treadmill, net zero immigration uh, more radical action to stop the boats and some quite radical tax cuts. Now, there's nothing racist about that agenda whatsoever. And it just reminds yeah. me, uh, when I was involved in UKIP back in the day campaigning for Brexit, it was the classic sm smear. David Cameron, as Prime Minister, said UKIP was supported okay. by fruitcakes, loonies and, quote, closet racist. Uh, yeah, no, all right. Rebounded, it should rebound again. OK, uh, look, Pablo, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you in on this. It's almost as if like, they're absolutely rattled by the reform machine and now they just want to point the finger out and call everyone a racist and hope that sticks. Well, I was thinking about um, your question there about whether this was uh, a sort of conservative plan, whether they were plotting and, and putting... Can if that is the case, it is the only good move that the conservative campaign has made this entire time. I mean, their campaign has been a complete disaster. If this just happens to be the one time that they've actually managed to make a dent in this campaign, it would be impressive. Um, but I think that the first thing to say is that if a, re if a female reform candidate says that the party is misogynistic, I'm not sure that we, three men, by the way, can tell her that she's wrong. Um, but on the point of racism, it's a spectrum. It's not that you are or you're not. People have racist characteristics and opinions, but they also have non-racist ones. Just because you like curry doesn't mean that you can use the P word. Um, and not all reform voters are racist. But all racists are going to vote reform in oh, this election. Oh, come off it, mate. That's ridiculous. I think, I mean, that's can ridiculous I do, all right, no, once that, once that, one that, I just want to say, Pablo, what is your evidence for that? Where else are they going to go? 
you don't find racists in the Liberal Democrats. You don't find well, you racists found in loads the of racists party. in the Labour Party, didn't you? Because they had a massive anti-Semitism problem, Pablo. And Keir Starmer did sort it out. To be fair to him. Oh yeah, it was gross. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that he did he did a pretty good job. You know, he, I mean, he booted so out. So they're all going to vote reform now, are they, Pablo? They're all those anti-Semites. Where, where where else are racist voters going to go? They don't have anywhere else to go. I'm not saying that everyone that is voting for reform is racist. But yeah, but you're else saying else every single racist in the country is going to vote for reform. I mean, Patrick, what, what do you oh, do with comments? What, what do you do with comments like that, Patrick? Well, I mean, I think it's deplorable and very sad. Uh, uh, you know, Pablo comes from from his position on the polit political um, uh, spectrum. Uh, Georgie David comes from hers, and I, I don't think, incidentally, it does reforms processes of selection much much credit that they chose someone that flaky and I think flaky uh, is the best you could say for her and you, indeed some people online are claiming a, that she was a, a plant from the start but Nigel Farage has made it clear that you know uh, reform as a startup was was really put up against it by an earlier than expected election and that with a longer run in and in future contests it's going to do better mm. and I'm glad about that but you know the, the, the issues that I, I set out that they are stressing be it uh, uh, illegal migration, legal migration, uh, the massively expensive net zero treadmill, uh, the, the, the profile of taxes in this country, which are a massive deterrent to wealth creation. These are perfectly respectable, mainstream, even in the old days, less than a generation ago, you would say centre ground okay. opinions. And yet we have the left pushing what they call the Overton window of acceptable views, massively leftward. And unfortunately, we've had a Conservative Party that's gone along with it. I think the the average Brit will sniff a stitch up here and will think, well, you know, the Conservatives warning about this Labour mega majority, well, it looks like that's a done deal and oh. it's going to happen and that they might as well vote for what they believe in this time. And I think the Reform Party is going to do pretty well in this election. Pablo, I just wonder whether the left on this country, you know, the Liberal Democrats in particular, actually, sneered at people who they thought were going to vote Brexit to the point where they didn't really do everything they possibly could to win that referendum and then they did their best afterwards to demonise anyone who voted for Brexit and try to overturn the thing. Have you not learned your lesson trying to do the same thing now with reform voters and people who want to lean that way? They must be thick and racist. Absolutely not. Listen, I, I can tell you, I, I worked on that campaign, Tremaine. It was a terrible campaign. I knew it was a terrible campaign whilst I was there. I said it from the very beginning. No one wanted to listen to me. Um, I'm sure I'm making lots of friends <laughs> saying this. Um, but I do think that there is... I do actually think that there is a historic problem um, on that sort of spectrum of left to right, where it is seen that if you're on the left and you think, you know, a certain way about immigration or whatever, that you are kind of looking down on people who have concerns about immigration. I don't think that having concerns about immigration is at all racist, it, it, even in the slightest. Um, but I do think that there are ways in which it is tackled and spoken about. And I think... When you come from Farage's perspective, he has consistently used very strong anti-immigrant language that targets specific groups that makes it appear racist. And I think that's the difference. I'm happy to have that conversation about immigration and migration, but we have to do it in a way that is that is balanced and fair and doesn't target certain groups. OK, all right, look, both of you, thank, thank you very, very much. That is uh, Patrick O'Flynn there, who is political commentator and also former senior advisor to the Liberal Democrats, Pablo O'Hanna. Uh, I have a little clip now, actually, of Rishi Sunak reacting to this defection. It's also just worth bearing in mind, you know, that this person probably wasn't even a household name in her own home until, what, this morning?